You know, today I want to share something fundamental and very simple. Sometimes the Word of God is mysterious, but sometimes it's just really simple. God is a genius. I love the way he does things, but, but I want to teach you some fundamentals about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So I was watching the Syracuse game, driving myself crazy, sitting in my easy chair on uh, what day was it? I don't even know. <laughs> I think it was Friday night. Okay, I told you I lost track of time. I think it was Friday night. I was watching Syracuse basketball. I love Syracuse basketball. Does anybody love Syracuse basketball? A couple of you. Amen. Does anybody love the Bills? I watched them on Thursday night. Yeah, they rocked it. They were good. Dad raised his hands back there. But uh, it was really close. They were playing Auburn. They were playing in a tournament. And it was really close. People were hustling. They were moving, and the game was close until almost the second half. And then something happened, okay? Auburn got back to fundamentals. These guys started playing like crazy. They started stealing the ball. Syracuse got lazy. They started turning over. They lost their fundamentals. They went into halftime. It was about a six-point difference. I know you're all excited about this story. It was about a six-point difference. They came out at halftime, and Auburn was brutal, man. They, they were just rocking the place. They didn't make any mistakes. They, they only had one turnover in the second half. That's amazing for a college basketball game. I mean, they were hustling, running up and down the field. They were passing the ball. They were crisp with everything they did. They were fundamentally sound. Syracuse got blown out of the game because they lost the fundamentals. And I want to speak to you about keeping our fundamentals sound in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, you might think I'm talking fundamentals. I'm talking to all the new believers. No, that's not the case. We all need reminding, okay? We all need to be reminded of the fundamentals of not the game, but of the kingdom. Amen? Can anybody give me an amen? Is it okay to preach to you today? Can I preach to you? Just bob your head. It's okay. Amen. You know, when we're fundamentally sound, we'll see the success that God wants for our lives. We'll see our purpose come to life when we're fundamentally sound. But sometimes we just have to stick with the basics. God made it very simple. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. He's genius. The creator of everything. The father of everything. The son that redeemed us. The son that beat the enemy. He redeemed us. Okay. And then the Holy Spirit that came to live inside of each and every believer. Amen. God is on the inside. And that's the title of this message today. God on the inside. And it applies to all of you. So, so keep your attention focused on what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. The most important person on the face of the earth today is the Holy Spirit. He has more wisdom than all the scientists put together in this world. Amen. He has, he has more knowledge than every college professor in every school in America. Amen. He has more riches than any of all the wealthiest people put together in this world. He has more knowledge than all the books in every single library in America. Amen. He's the most important person on earth. Why, you ask? Well, it's very simple. Because he was sent to complete the work of God, to complete the purposes of God, to carry out God's intentions, not just on the earth, but in your lives, amen? In your lives, not your neighbor's life, yes, your neighbor's life too, but your life, amen? Sometimes we try to shift the blame to our neighbor, but we're not talking about our neighbors today. We're talking about you, amen? We're talking about you and you and you. The most important work on earth, sometimes I think it's my job, but it's not, okay? It's not the government. Although they need to clean their act up a little bit, 
okay? They're not the most important thing on earth. It's not law enforcement agencies. I love you if you're in law enforcement, but your job is not the most important job on earth, amen? It's not research and development. Some of you might be in research and development, and it's taken our country to great levels, but they don't have the most important job on earth. The Holy Ghost has the most important job on, work, on earth. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Old Testament is seen as the work of the Father, now, I want to teach you about the Holy Spirit a little bit, so pay attention. The Old Testament is seen as the work of the Father. The New Testament is seen as the work of the Son. Everybody with me? Of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The redemptive power of Jesus Christ. You know, it was the Father in the Old Testament. It's Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Amen? But today, in our life, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Not, that's the time that we live in. Now is the time of the work of the Holy Spirit. So it's critical for us to get to know him and for us to get to have a relationship with him because that's why he's here. Amen? You see, Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit in John 16. He says, Now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your life. You see, the disciples were sad that Jesus was saying, I'm going to be going. But his, his leaving was essential to their growth. It was important for their growth. How many know the stronger a disciple because he walks by faith, not by what he can see? Amen? If you walk by faith, you will be much stronger of a disciple. And that's what Jesus was telling them. He says, nevertheless... I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. I could imagine being there. It's good for me to go. And they're like, no, master, it's not. We've been walking together for a couple years now. It's not good for you to go. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the helper, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You see, Jesus was, was, was so caring for the disciples. He wanted to tell them everything, but he knew if he told them everything, they wouldn't understand. So he gave, some, he gave them some foresight, telling them, I will send the helper, the Holy Spirit, to you. They didn't see the advantage. They didn't understand the sacrifice that he was going to be walking in. You see, he was saying this, he was saying this during the res time of the resurrection, during the time that he went to the cross. They couldn't understand about the helper, the Holy Spirit, until they actually would experience him. When I tell people about the Holy Spirit, sometimes they don't understand. Because you have to be a believer to understand the Holy Spirit in your heart. Amen. You have to be a believer. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, this is Jesus talking again. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you into what? Truth. Amen. Amen. For he will not speak on his own authority. We'll stop there on truth for a minute. Stop there on truth. You know, sometimes we get excited in the pulpit. We get excited about what we're talking about. We get excited about the word of God. And I'm just going to remind you, if I speak anything that isn't true, or you feel like it isn't true, then you need to check it. Amen? You need to check it with the word. Amen? There's a lot of truth out there. There's a lot of untruth out there. And truth comes against the truth. And sometimes our feelings, our emotions collide. Sorry, Tim. Our emotions collide. He doesn't like when I clap my hands up near the microphone. Okay, with that. So sometimes we have to check the word because the word is the truth. Amen? For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take care of what is mine and declare it to you. Now remember, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. You see, the Holy Spirit's purpose is to reveal Jesus. 
That's his whole purpose, to reveal Jesus. He's Jesus on the inside of you, amen? He can be with every believer all the time now. When he walked on earth, he walked in a body. He was trapped in a body like us, but now he can be in every believer that walks this earth, amen? Is that, is that genius of our God or what? He sent Jesus to preach, to redeem us, and now he sends the Holy Spirit that can walk on the inside of us day after day after day, giving us everything that he wants to give us, speaking everything that he wants to speak to us. But we have to have that relationship with him, amen? For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That's Matthew 18. You see, this wasn't a promise he could keep if he walked the earth. But it was a promise he could keep as the Holy Spirit. Amen? He was telling them, where two or three are gathered together, there I will be. Okay? He doesn't have to book a flight and come to our meeting. He doesn't have to do any of that. All we have to do is call on the Holy Spirit because he lives where? He lives on the inside. Amen? He goes on, he says, in a little while, you will not see me. And again... In a little while, you will not see me. He says it twice. Because the first time, he's coming to heaven. The second time, he's coming back. Amen? He's coming back to get us. Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as someone who will guide you, he'll teach you, and he'll bring revelation into your life. Do you believe it? He says he'll never speak of himself. He'll always speak on behalf of Jesus Christ. So when you're hearing from the Holy Spirit, you're hearing from Jesus. When you do as the Holy Spirit asks you to do, you are glorifying Jesus in your life. Amen? Why? Because Jesus is the Word. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. So whenever the power of God acts, then it acts on the Word. Amen? And the amazing thing is, is he lives inside of us. The power of God lives on side of, inside of us. The power of God to act on the word of God lives inside of each and every one of us believers. Amen? It says in Joel 2, it shall come to pass afterwards. After what? After the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On what flesh? On all flesh. Amen. You see, God is moving across this country. He is moving all over the place, from church to church, from land to land to region to region. Don't wait for the 6 o'clock news to tell you, because they're not going to tell you about a revival in the land. We have to know it through the power of the Holy Ghost. We have to feel it through the power of the Holy Ghost. He'll tell you about revival. We are in the middle of revival, but if you don't know the Holy Spirit, then you won't know the revival that God is pouring out across this land. And no unbeliever is going to bear witness to that. Amen? Only the believer that has the Holy Spirit working in his life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Who? Your sons and daughters. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. You see, when the Holy Spirit came, that's when the last days began, folks. When the Holy Spirit came, when Jesus went up into heaven to the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit took a place in your heart, that's when the last days began. And we need to start living like we're living in the last days. Amen? We need to start living like we're living there. He's pouring his spirit out, and everybody can be included. Everybody, your sons and daughters, your men and your women, amen? We see the word manifesting before our eyes everywhere. Everywhere as evidence of the last days. Everywhere we look. You know, somebody said, there's some preachers out there that are bringing the newscast of the devil. And they don't like it. But if we, if we don't talk about what's happening in our world, if we don't rebuke what's happening in our world, then how can we come against it? Amen? I don't like to sit here and talk about Satan from the pulpit on every opportunity I get. But if I don't call him out, if I don't rebuke him before you, if we, if we don't call out the sin that's in this world, then we're doing nothing but making it a candy cane religion. 
And we're not going to do it in this house. We're going to call out the sins that are in this world. We have to. It's our job. And if the Holy Spirit lives in us, then how could we not? Amen? We have to do it. Amen. It says in Hebrews 8, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. You see, before that was the old covenant. Before Christ was the old covenant. And Moses went up and brought the tablets down. He brought the law down that people had to live by. Amen. They had to sacrifice because of their sin, because they couldn't keep the law. Amen. They would break the law that was written on the tablets. And they would have to sacrifice animals to, them, to those sins. Not, not eliminating those sins, but just covering them over. So they would have to daily do it. You know, it talks about Job in the Bible, how he would daily sacrifice for his children and for their sins. Daily. But it says here, I will put my law in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now what do you think that means? He says, I'm going to put the Holy Spirit in your life. I'm going to put the Holy Spirit in your, law, in, your, in your heart. You no longer have to follow the rules that's written on the tablets. Those tablets are gone. Now you're walking with Jesus on the inside. Amen? It says, none of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Now, a lot of people use that scripture, if you know it, to say, well, I don't have to listen to a preacher. Okay? Sometimes I don't even have to listen to the word. But it's very simple. If you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, then you don't need somebody to tell you step by step how to live for God because God is living on the inside. Amen? You don't need somebody to hold your hand all the way and say this is where you need to go. Over there is not good. The Holy Spirit tells you where you can go, where isn't good to go. Amen? So no longer do we have to rely on a priest to tell us everything. No longer do we have to sacrifice those things. We have God on the inside. It says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just give Jesus some thanks in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you, you went to the cross so that, so that our sins will be remembered no more. What a great promise from God. Your sins will be remembered no more. I don't have to get up anymore and cut the throat of a cow or a goat to sacrifice to God. Jesus paid the price. And when he went to heaven, he left the God Holy Spirit behind with us. Amen. Look how important it was to Jesus. The, the Holy Spirit was to Jesus. I'm going to take a sip. Holy Spirit prophesied the coming of Jesus. The Spirit came upon those who prophesied. All through the Old Covenant, all through the New Covenant. Everybody heard about Jesus. And it was the Holy Spirit that made it loud and clear. Amen. He led Jesus into the wilderness to be tested. He prepared Jesus for his responsibility. He leads us in and out of the wilderness too. He'll always, he'll always help us when we're in the wilderness. He'll always make a way out. If you're in this place today and you feel like you're in a wilderness, the Holy Spirit, if you recognize him, if you give him the authority in, his, in, in your life, then he will make a way for you to come out of the wilderness. Sometimes he might send you to the wilderness because you need it. It's like those thorns we were talking about on the side of the road. It might hurt a little bit when we get off to the edges of the road that it's meant to hurt. It's meant to draw you back in to God, draw you back into the protection of God. Amen? It says, in this world you ha will have trouble. That's something Jesus said. In this world you will have trouble. But if you got the Holy Ghost inside, then you're going to be able to overcome anything that happens in this world. Can I get an amen? He sealed the baptism of Jesus 
When Jesus came up out of the water, it says the Holy Spirit came upon him. Amen? Jesus ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. He cast out demons by the authority of the Holy Spirit. He healed people by the power of the Holy Spirit. He taught us the power of the Holy Ghost. He did it so we could learn how to do it step by step by step. He allowed the Holy Ghost to, to work in his life just like the Holy Ghost wants to work in our own life. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit was with him on the cross. There's no place that he won't go with you. Even in the darkest places that you might take yourself, there's no place that he will not go with you. Amen? And he will be there with you when you're, when you're in the midst of it. He was resurrected by the Holy Spirit. It says in Romans 1, the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead. Every part of his life was orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? He wants to work the same way in your life. He regenerates the believer. He brings new life to us. That's why he came into our hearts to bring new life to us. With God on the inside, how could we not be full of life? Amen. Am I just preaching to myself? He wants to work the same way. The Spirit dwells in the believer. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You've been adopted by the Spirit of God to be sons of God. That's the word. You've been adopted by the Spirit of God, to be sons of God. The Holy Spirit fills the believer. He fills us. What's he fill us with? He fills us with love. He fills us with grace, amen. He fills us with the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, the self-control of God, amen. He, he fills us with the power of God. Sometimes you might not feel like you have the power of God working in your life, but he's there. We don't plug into it. And that's the one thing we need to learn to do is to plug into the power of God in our lives that the Holy Spirit has placed there. He's there for a reason. The power of God is strong. God is not going to live in your body without being a strong God. Amen? Amen. Amen. He is the God of the universe. He interprets Scripture for us. No man can understand the things of God except by the Spirit of God. Again, that's the Word. Amen. He brings the Word to life. The Spirit brings discernment to see truth. You'll know the truth when you see it. You see, the enemy wants to deceive you if you have the Holy Spirit working, the key word, working in your life. You'll see the truth. You'll know the truth. You'll desire the truth. More than any time in history, I think man should desire the truth that the Holy Spirit can bring. With everything that we have, with computers, with television, with, with cell phones, with texting, with, with video chats, TikTok, I don't know all the things, man. I've never been on TikTok, all that stuff, but there's so much out there that wants to deceive you. It wants to fill you up with the garbage of this world. With all of that out there and just hearing the garbage, we need the Holy Spirit on the inside to reveal the truth, to let us discern what the truth is for our life, for your life. Amen? He empowers the believer. He gives us ability, and he empowers our purpose. Yes, you do have a purpose. Yes, you do. You have a purpose because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Don't you dare say you don't have a purpose for God. You have God on the inside. You have a purpose, and he will empower you for that purpose. He's one person, but he manifests himself in many different ways. Amen? He's like electricity. You know, there's a pole and a transformer out there on the front of this building, and it brings electricity into this building. And it doesn't matter what house you go to, what business you go to, it's the same electricity going into that building. A amen? People use it for different reasons. People plug in for different reasons. Yesterday, we plugged in to get the air compressor going so we could bang shingles on this roof. Amen? We plug in sometimes for a saw. We are builders. Amen? 
Yesterday, I plugged it in to run the vacuum cleaner. Amen. The house was a mess from I don't know what days it was. It was like Thursdays or Fridays or, or whatever, but the house was a mess. I had to plug in and get the power to run the vacuum cleaner. And it's the same way in our spiritual lives, amen? We all use that power for different reasons. And the Holy Spirit has that power for every single need. And some of you have some needs, and he has power. He has Holy Spirit power for that need, for that need, for your need. Yes, your need. He has Holy Spirit power for it. Now, I'm going to really mess some of you up here. Okay, you ready to get messed up? Say amen. Do it, pastor. All right. The Bible speaks of two distinct experiences concerning the Holy Spirit. Number one is the receiving of the Holy Spirit through your conversion. You walk down an altar. You said, Lord, I know what you did for me. You gave your life for mine. You took away my sins. You washed it away with your blood. You went to the cross. Lord, I believe in you. I want you to come into my life, and I want to live for you. And the Holy Spirit, the promise is the Holy Spirit now lives inside. He lives in you. Amen? Is he in your life? If he's not, then you'll have an opportunity at the end of this service to invite him in just the way we talked about it. You'll have that opportunity because he wants to be in your life. However, there's another experience that Jesus spoke about, and this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. So we have the receiving of the Holy Spirit, and we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is very important too. It means you've submerged yourself. Bapto means I've submerged myself. Amen. It means to soak. It means to temper. It, it means to allow Jesus to soak in you and temper your life and always remain emerged. He doesn't just want to come into your life. He wants to soak in your life. He wants to be there for every need you have. He wants you to be so consumed by the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be so consumed that you just can't get away because it's like you're in that swimming pool. You see, I can, I can drink this water and it's in me. The water is in me. Now, if I come over and throw this water on Mackenzie, it's going to be all over, isn't it? Splash it on my glasses. You see, I can either drink a little water and have it in me, or I can jump in the sw swimming pool, and I can be soaked, and I can be in the middle of that water. I can, al I can allow that swimming pool to just consume me. And that's what I want. I want to stay in that pool so long. I want my hands to wrinkle up because of the Holy Spirit. I want, I want to look like I'm 120 years old because my hands are so wrinkled from being soaked in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Many people have problems in life because they have the Spirit. Now get this. But the Spirit doesn't have them. You got the Holy Spirit inside you. But the Holy Spirit doesn't have you. You struggle with some of the same old things. You know you're saved, but you just keep falling back. You keep falling back into the old sins. You keep falling back into some of the same addictions and, and habits. You keep falling back into some of the same old thoughts. Come on now, am I preaching to myself again? You keep falling back. You know you're saved. You got the Holy Spirit in you, but, but you keep falling back. When you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. But when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, this is when you jump into him. Then now he has you. He has you by the leg. He has you. He has you. You gave yourself to him. You've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. You're saying, Lord, I just want to be submerged in your presence. I, I don't want to be able to get away from your presence. Amen? I want to be soaked in the truth. I want you to fill every part of my life. 
And you know, God likes those invitations, but he's always a gentleman too at the same time. He created you with, with a will of your own. He doesn't want to force his love on you. He wants you to love him because of who he is. Amen? He wants to love you for, for the God of this universe, for your redeemer. He wants, he wants you to love him for eternity. He gave his life to you. So he will never force himself on you. He'll never force the issue. We say, I want to surrender to you. Fill me up. Not just with a cup full. But God, I want to swim in the river. Amen. I don't want just a cup full from God today. I don't want a cup full. He'll pour it for you. He'll pour you a cup. It's okay. You can walk to the table of God and he'll pour you a little cup. He'll even pour it in a little shot glass for you, a little Dixie cup if that's what you want. He'll give you whatever you want. I want to swim in the well of God. I want to have this unending access to the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to jump in. I want to feel the current of God. I want to feel his full effect in my life. I want to feel his full power in my life. No longer do I want to walk around with just a little bit of what he has. Does anybody want just a little bit? Y'all lying. Y'all are lying. I'm getting, no, I'm not saying you all are. I'm sorry. Lord, I apologize. I apologize for judging, Lord. But I, but I know the Holy Spirit told me that you all don't want that. Some of you do. Some of you just want a little bit. But I don't want to carry them just on the inside. I want to carry him everywhere. I want to carry him on the outside. I want, to, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to walk with me and talk with me. I want him to be evident in my life. But some of you, you're just trying to hide him away. Okay, Holy Spirit, I got you. I know you came to live with me because the word says it. And I believe most of the word one of these days I want to bring my Bible in, except for I don't want to deface the Bible. I want to cut everything out of the Bible that man sometimes doesn't believe. And all I'll have is a front cover and a back cover. Amen. Man wants to take so much out of the Bible and have it fit his life. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I invite you into my life. I want to live for you. But stay over here. Stay in this corner because all these other things, they're mine. They're mine. I don't want to surrender to you. Just what I feel like surrendering today. God, I want to hold on to the rest. You tuck them away. You tuck them away in a safe place for when you need them. He's there. You can pull them out. You can call on them. And, you know, I wanted to find my jack in the box today, but I lost it. And I wanted to, you know, talk about a jack-in-the-box Christian. How sometimes we're okay, you know, we stuff God down into the box. And we're okay with that. Because we know he's there. We know he's there. You know, the box is there. The box is always there, except for I lost mine. The box is always there. And if I need him, all I got to do is crank it up a little bit. Maybe say a prayer. Maybe cry, maybe drop to my knees, and as I crank, Jesus will pop up out of the box, and there he is. And he'll say, listen, you know, will you give me a little more of your life today? Are you going to push me down into the box again? I came and I took care of this. I came and I comforted you when you needed me. Are you going to just stuff me back into the box again? But that's what we do sometimes with the Holy Spirit. He lives in us, but we tell him where he can go and where he can't go in our hearts and in our minds. You don't want, to, you don't want him to change certain things because you don't want to be accountable for those things. Okay, am I preaching to myself? You don't want to change because you don't want to be accountable. So you say, Jesus, stay out of that place. You're comfortable where you are. You accept things the way you are. So you don't invite them in to all of those places that you've locked them out of. Your heart has so many doors, it's like a school building. And you've got them locked and some of them open. Jesus is wandering the halls of your life, of your heart, and he's finding locked doors everywhere. 
I'm just preaching truth, folks. I'm just preaching truth, and I'm preaching to myself, too. I'm preaching to myself. Whatever you can endure, you'll never change. Some of you got really good at enduring things. You've learned to struggle through things. You've learned to just plow through with your own strength. You don't need Jesus for that. I'm just going to push through on my own. Whatever you can endure, you turn on the news. I can endure this, Lord. I can endure this. Whatever you can endure, you'll never change. Whatever you can tolerate, God will never move. Amen. Whatever you accept will always remain the same. And there's a doctrine out there that says we need to accept everything we see. Okay, there's a hyper grace do doctrine out there that says whatever happens goes. Okay, whatever happens, just keep winding that jack in the box. Let the music play. As the music play, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. It's like musical chairs. We tolerate it. And we let it soak into our lives when we should be soaking with the Holy Spirit. We let it soak in. We let it start to affect our lives. We let it start to lock some doors in our hearts. Amen? The Bible says we are the temple of God. It says it. I'm not making it up. It says you are the temple of God. So if you really believed that you were temp the temple of God, why would you do some of the things you do? He's not really locked away. He has access to your heart. He knows all those areas. You th we think we're wise and say, yeah, we locked the door on you, God. Well, he knows. Why do you go to some of the places you go? Why do you read some of the things that you read? Why do you watch some of the things that you watch? Why, when you're scrolling through online on Facebook, do you stop at certain places? Why would you do some of those things if you really believed you're the temple of God? You must be hungry for God, pursuing him, putting him first, staying emerged, staying soaked. That's how you gain the strength. That's how you gain the strength against those things. If you think I'm exempt, you're wrong. I have to get up every morning. I have to get hungry. I have to get committed. I have to believe that I'm going to walk through this day. I'm going to be successful, and I'm not going to make the temple of God dirty. And sometimes I still fail. But man, I get up and I do it again and again and again. And that's what we have to do as believers. Amen. We have to open up all those areas of our life. We have to invite God to take out some of those things. And you know what I'm talking about. You know those things that God needs to pull out of your life. Don't pretend you don't. I'm not being harsh. I'm just speaking in love. Okay. If nobody confronts you, then you'll be comfortable in what you got. You'll keep those doors locked, and you won't allow God to do it. But God is revealing some things to you if you're listening to the Holy Spirit right now. He's revealing some things to you in your life that you need to change, that you need to allow him to pull out. Amen. He needs to break down some things in your life, to rearrange some things. Donnie, he needs to rearrange the furniture in your house, and you need to like it. Amen. Amen. We get so used to some of the things in our lives that we can't change them. We have to give the Holy Spirit the ability and authority to do those things in our life. Amen. Sometimes getting soaked isn't comfortable. Like when we baptize 30, 40 people here, the water's dirty, scum on the top. You go down and you get a mouthful of dirty water. But you were baptized. You were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter whether you got to go to the Jordan and go in the dirtiest river around and get baptized. You need to get baptized. Sometimes it's not comfortable. Naaman didn't want to go to the Jordan. He wanted some other clean place. But God said, go to the Jordan and dunk yourself not just once, but seven times. And on the seventh time, he came out clean. Wasn't comfortable. 
He, he had to lower himself down. He had to humble himself. He had to say, okay, God, I'm gonna, here's the key. There's the key to all those doors. Go for it, God. So now you no longer decide to endure. You want victory in your life. You no longer will tolerate. You want to move things out. You're not settling anymore. We're not settling anymore. We're not settling anymore. We're not settling anymore. We're not settling anymore. You aren't deceived anymore. There's a lot of deception. We just talked about that. You're not, you're not deceived. The truth of God is moving in you. You now can see truth from faults. The devil may try to deceive you, but you know when you got him on the hook. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit changes you, and now God is going to use you to change the world around you. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit works. It's called power running in your body. It's not called weakness. It's not called shyness. It's called power running through your body. And when you clean your temple out, when you allow God to take all those things out, this is when you feel the power. You'll never feel the power if you don't clean that house up first, folks. But it has to hit home. It has to hit home, man. The Spirit of God lives in this body. He, he lives in this body. He knows everything about me. He's in my heart. It's not religious anymore. It's not about religion. It's about the power of God moving in my life to change my life, to change the lives of people around me, to change my area, to change my family. It's about the power of God moving through my life versus nothing. Versus nothing. It's God on the inside. And some of us still don't understand the reality of God living inside of you. We, we must keep it clean. Amen? We must keep it clean. Look at the world we live in. So many things we can't afford to have in our lives. Man, I can count them. I can't afford to have this in my life, God. And I'm not talking about because of money. I can't afford because of my spirit. I can't afford this because of who I serve. I can't afford this thing in my life. God, because of what this sin, I can't afford this. My family can't afford to have this in, in my life, God. My workplace can't afford to have, I can't afford to have it, God. So I'm not going to. I'm going to have the power instead. I'm going to have the power instead. I can't afford this other stuff in my life because I love you, Lord. Because I care about you. Because I want to make you happy. Because I want to glorify you, God. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You see, what he's saying there is he wants you to understand spiritual gifts. And so do I, too. And that's why, why on the next couple Wednesdays, I want to talk about spiritual gifts and I want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost as evidence with speaking in tongues. Amen. I want you to understand the gifts. Paul is saying, you know what? I don't want there to be contention between believers. I want you to have everything that I've given you in this book. But I don't want you to have contention. Those that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and those that do. If you believe that's great. If you don't believe, well, that's okay too. There should be no contention in the house of God when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to understand that. But he wants you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. He wants you to operate in the nine gifts of the Spirit. He wants the fruit of the Spirit to be evident in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. He wants everything that you do to, pre to create fruit. In your lives, amen. When you start to allow the Holy Spirit to have access to all the rooms in your heart, now you've, now you've got self-control all of a sudden popping up in your life when you never had it. Now all of a sudden you got this joy that you never had. You know what? I can pray myself right into joy. I can encourage myself in the Holy Ghost. And that's why he's there. I can, I can bring that joy to my life in, in two seconds when I feel down. I get self-control now. 
Now all of a sudden, man, I was never a patient person, but all of a sudden now I got patience on top of all that too. Boy, look at the fruit growing in my life. It's like a harvest of all kinds of good stuff that the Holy Spirit just dropped down on top of me. Look at all this stuff. Long-suffering. Nobody wants to talk about long-suffering, but man, when you can have victory in the mix of long-suffering, then you know you got fruit moving in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says, there are diversities of gifts, of gifts, but the same spirit. That's the power manifesting itself in different ways in your life. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. You see, Jesus appoints you to the service, and the Holy Spirit gives you power to complete the service. It equips you for the service. Whatever you're born to do, he enables you to do. That's what the Holy Spirit does in your life. Whatever you were born to do, he enables you to do. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Come on, whatever you're born to do, the God on the inside enables you to do it. Whatever God demands you to do, whatever he demands from you, he's going to supply to you every need to meet that demand. Amen. He never expects from you what he's not willing to give you. Amen. Amen. He will give you the tools through the Holy Spirit to do what you need to do. Whatever he demands. When God calls you to do something, get this one, folks. Whatever God calls you to do something, this indicates that you can. It means you can do it. Amen? If he called you to do something, if he put this idea, this vision in your head, if he gave you this thought and it's from the Holy Ghost, if he said do it, it indicates that you can. It means you can. It means you can. You just need to plug in to the power of the Holy Ghost. God is richer than all of the richest men. God has more knowledge than all the books in the libraries. Amen? Amen. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. You can go ahead and play. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is given to each of us for the profit of all. Amen? For who? For all. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm here to help. Say, I'm here to profit you. I'm here to profit you. Now take your purse. Okay? You take your purse and pull some cash out of your purse, give it to your neighbor, say, here. Now I'm going to profit you. And now Holy Spirit says... You're here to profit the kingdom of God. Now, neighbor, you take, this is all Holy Spirit driven, so trust me. You take what your neighbor just gave you and you take it over and put it into the offering bin. Now we profit the kingdom of God. Amen. We're here to profit one another. No joking aside. We're here to profit one another. Amen. We're here to profit the kingdom with all of our different gifts. With all of our different talents, with everything that God has given us, with all of our abilities, when we have the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, then we put the prophet of God, the prophet of the kingdom, first in our lives. Amen? We put it first. to preach with the word in my hand. So what's the take home for today? Because I said a lot. Or should I say the Holy Spirit said a lot. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. I hope, I hope you gave him some keys this morning. Let's make our bodies a home for the Holy Spirit. Let's make God who he really is who he really is. Remember, David said, let's magnify the Lord together. The Lord is everywhere. He's bigger than big. We don't even understand God's abilities. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We don't understand it. 
our minds are so small when we magnify the Lord and we expand our God. We expand our God. He doesn't need us to expand him for his purpose. He needs us to expand him for our own purpose. Amen? Amen. Let's plug into the power of the Holy Spirit. If you can walk out of here today with the reality that God is on the inside and he has these things for you, then you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. And I'm telling the truth. The Bible says it, but the problem is we never give him that authority sometimes. The ones who win are the ones who do. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, some say, would cease. The gifts of the Spirit, some say, would cease. Not in my life. Not in this. I've come too far. I've gotten through so much because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in my life, because of the gifts of the Spirit in my life. Okay? The problem is we never unlock that part, that door in our heart. We never unlock that door. That door is locked from here moving forward. Till I die, I am locking that door. So we lock away the power of God. We walk away all that victory, that joy. Not that you can't have it with the Spirit living in you. He's everything. He is everything. You can have eternity, but you still got a door locked in your heart. Amen? Let's profit one another. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Thanks for letting the Holy Spirit speak to you today. I know I opened some things up, and we're not going to leave it. We're not going to leave it with you guys wondering. We're going to be teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. On Wednesdays, we're going to be teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. On Wednesdays, our Wednesdays are getting strong. I said it before. You know, you can, you can see how popular the church is on Sunday, but on Wednesday, you can see how popular the Holy Ghost is, how popular Jesus is. We're getting... We're getting some power in this place because we're plugging in. We're plugging in, amen? And we're training and we're equipping. And that's what we want to do. You never know. We might talk about it on Sunday too. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for you if you want it. And today I want to give you the opportunity to want it. I want to give you the opportunity to, to receive it because it's a matter of just receiving that gift, okay? It's a matter of just receiving. I, I got some notes here, and I want to share a couple things. How do we use the baptism? How do we use tongues specifically? 1 Corinthians 14, we speak to God in tongues. Sometimes I just don't know. I run out of words, man. God is so big that I don't even know what to say to him sometimes. And I just, I become silent. But if I, if I speak in tongues, then, then I'm speaking in my prayer language to God. He understands what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm thinking these things, but I can't say it. He understands what I'm trying to say. We pray and sing in tongues. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, we edify myself. I just told you how many times I edify myself when I speak in tongues. Okay? You need to, you need to, you need to believe me when I say that when I speak in tongues, I can, take, I can take something and leave it behind me just like that. I edify myself. That's what the Word says. It says in 1 Corinthians 14. It says in Jude 20, you build up your faith by praying in tongues. It builds your faith up. Amen? 
It, it, it says in Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. You see, praying in the Spirit in association with the armor of God. When I need the armor of God and I, and I don't have the ability to, to, to walk and talk the way that I would want to present, and I have that a lot, you already know that. I rely on tongues to tell God what I need. Amen? Because God knows my need. He's in my heart. He's in my heart. I have unlocked those doors, and he's able to move in my heart. So these guys are going to play a song here. I'm not going to ask anybody to come down here right now, but when we start playing this song, I'm going to ask those of you that would like to be prayed for, you'd like to get baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues to come right down here. Pastor Christina and Pastor David are going are gonna to pray with you. If there's anybody down here that would like to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't know him, you want to know him, you want the Holy Spirit moving in your life, I'm going to ask you to come down here and I will pray with you. Anybody else that needs prayer, you're more than willing, welcome to come down. We're going to sing, we're going to worship, we're going to open our mouths, and we're going to let God fill up our, our, our spirit with a meal from heaven. Amen. As we worship him, we're going to sing one song, and then you all are dismissed. We love you. We care for you. We thank God for you. And I pray that you take something home today that changes your life. Amen. Amen.